Update 111.111. Welcome to another episode of the Data Driven CarCast. This week, we start with teams that you should be following to know everything about data, AI, and analytics. I'm going to start with Sébastien, Jean-Marc, Mathieu, David of Renault. I know you might not have caught the names because they're French, but they work for Renault, one of the largest automotive leaders in the world. This week, they shared best practices for IDM, industry data management. And these best practices have allowed them to connect more than 4,900 industrial appliances transmitting more than a billion messages per day. They document their journey, their best practices, and their principles in a great blog. I hope you have time to take a look at it. My second team or second person is Mike Anders from KeyBank. He's one of my favorite chief data officers. And this week, we talked about how his team migrated 40 on-premise data marts and their data lake to do fraud analytics, risk modeling. They span across 150 data sources, 80 systems, 250 machine learning models and governance. Mike is very articulate, someone that you're going to want to follow if you want to learn how to navigate the very noisy world of data analytics and the various cloud options. The team as Uber is the next team I would suggest you follow. If you use Uber today, you know about the complexity of their architecture. And in this blog, which is a two-part series, they explain the tenets of their modern data architecture enables billions of, of database transactions per day, millions of concurrent users across 10,000 cities. Great blog, a little bit more technical, so you're going to want to take time and also make sure that you share it with your technical teams. And then finally, someone to know, Kelly Simmons. She is the VP of Data Management at MasterCard. And in an interview or podcast with eWeek, she talks about where data governance needs to go next. These leaders are the movers and shakers of our industry. I hope you'll have time to listen to what they have to say and follow and connect with them. Now, this week, something big happened. It is the release of the 2021 machine learning AI and data landscape that was published, I think, on Thursday. I had the opportunity to talk to Matt uh, recently and you know, I've been in touch with him because he's been at it for eight years. The first version, if you remember, was called the Big Data Landscape. And now he's brought in his reach to machine learning, AI and data mad for short. But you're going to be glad that Matt has done all this work. Uh, because the space has been in complete explosion over the last eight years. And if you're like me, you remember the days when nobody wanted to talk about data and databases. Well, now we have vindication because data, AI, and analytics is pretty much the only thing that this space wants to talk about. And recent analysis from uh, uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry from Greylock, his partner there, Jerry Shen, he notes that a large portion of the $30 billion spent in the tech space over the last two years have actually been allocated principally to AI, machine learning, and analytics. A lot of other areas, but the three big ones are those. And so this analysis that is done by my friend and compatriot, Matt Turk of First Smart Capital, is going to be very much needed if your CIO or data leader needs to make decisions. Now, I dedicated my Forbes column this month to this because I think it's a big deal. But I want to take a few minutes here to take you through the main takeaways. The first one is that in his research, Matt makes the case that the data foundation that's needed for you to innovate on is pretty much been laid out. You know, long gone are the days of unscalable on-premises databases or difficult to manage Hadoop clusters. Now he's saying that the market has built infrastructure that is required to help any company of any size to store data in the cloud securely. And what that means for you is innovation, acceleration, and proliferation. If the foundation is set, now you can expect applications to take advantage of it and proliferate. Either they'll be built by your your internal data teams that are using intelligent frameworks, or you will have to buy them from innovative startups. The second point he makes is this point on convergence. Now, we've talked about this in the past. If you remember, I wrote about convergence. In fact, I had a little bit of a sarcastic uh, view of it. I called it convergence, schmonvergence because I wanted to focus on the center of design of specific products. And I summarized that thinking again in this month's Forbes piece, so you can remember uh, what I mean here. But it's true, it's undeniable that these technologies are coming together. We're now no longer talking about transactional versus analytical, or batch versus real-time, or BI versus AI. We're talking about and and with, meaning transactional and analytical, BI with AI. But still... If you're a CIO data leader, you want to watch out for what I called, if you remember, vendor speak. And if you don't know what vendor speak is, well, you're going to have to read my Forbes piece. It explains it to you in a nice little paragraph for you this month. Now, all of this is great. 
great foundation, convergence of workloads, and that's awesome. But if you're a CIO, what should you actually be doing? And so Matt and I discussed at least two things you can do. The first one is think like a VC. And the second one is think like an engineer. What do we mean? Think like a VC. You don't want to just narrow your view of the technology to the founder's narrative or the astronomical valuations they're going to talk to you about. You know, now you want to benchmark these companies using some of the resources that are available in the market. Like Bessemer, for instance, came out recently last week. I shared this great post from them on cost structure. We now have a lot of information about the best run companies in the space after a flurry of data, AI and analytics startups that went IPO last year and the year before. Think like an engineer, that means that you want to be careful with those pilots. You're going to be inundated with them if you don't pay attention because there's more and more companies now and it's becoming easier for them to kind of propose to you how to try their technology on your problem. But remember, pilots can be deceptive. So Matt's advice here is to take pilots into production metrics and really look at those production metrics, even if it costs you a little bit more time, a little bit more money, create opportunities for your teams to do hackathons around those and really push all the way to production so you can see how much time it takes you there and how much you can roll back those kind of back and forth here. The ability to have agile innovation is becoming more and more important, especially when you have so many options. And I think he's right because if you're looking at artificial intelligence, you know that almost 80% of these pilots actually never make it to production. So you're going to want to be diligent. You're going to want to maybe spend a little bit more time, uh, but you're going to want to see those pilots out to production. Anyway, that is a quick digest of this week, Data AI and Analytics Post of the Week. As usual, feel free to reach out to me if you feel I forgot anything. Feel free to comment on uh, this post and the resources that we're providing for you. I hope you'll find all of this useful, and I will see you next week.